In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. St. Andrew's Day is a good way to start Advent. It sets the focus of these next weeks upon hearing the Word of God and its learning. Of course, our understanding of God's Word and its work and its purpose have become corrupt. Many think of it as simply words in a book or a nice collection of stories. Others think that God's Word is given chiefly to provide answers and guidance and lessons to help get through life. Still others see these stories as moral tales, like those of Aesop, by which we can instruct the children, especially in good behavior. But God is clear, and the scriptures are Jesus. He is the Word of God. And because Jesus is our gift from the Father, then so also is the words that come from his mouth. The scriptures are given by God, the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is the breath of God who breathes out the Bible for us in many and various ways, by prophets and evangelists and apostles. All this is so that we would come to know that he is, who God is, and who he is for us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for us, that we would know of first importance the gift of the Father in giving his only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for us, to redeem us from sin, from death, and hell, and to make us sons of God and inheritors of the promise. Of course, that's what John said when he pointed at Jesus and directed St. Andrew to him. Behold, the Lamb of God. Therefore, St. Peter also writes, Know this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So also, St. Paul writes by the Spirit, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, for every good work, 1 Timothy. So the scriptures cry out, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This proclamation calls all to hear Jesus and to believe that Jesus is the only way to be forgiven by God, to have the righteousness that the law demands. He takes upon himself your sin and sheds his blood and gives his life for your salvation. That's what it means to call him the Lamb. And then the scriptures implore you to come and see the Messiah who has come to save his people. The scriptures show you Jesus and then give you Jesus and are Jesus with you and for you. For this reason, it is of first importance, as we heard St. Peter say, that we receive Jesus in the way that he speaks. We cannot and must not make Jesus say what we want him to say from our sinful hearts, that is, manipulate his word so that he does what we want him to do, nor even twist his word to give promises that we want Jesus to promise. Instead, the scriptures, as Jesus' word, must stand apart from us and speak to us. This is why St. Paul asserted that faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the message of the angel whom God sends. And the angels of God, whether in the realms of glory or in the pulpit, are his preachers. And the aim and goal of the word preached is that you would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and be saved. So it is this Advent tide that we're considering our hymn. And tonight's, tonight's the first night. We have four nights on Once He Came in Blessing. I don't know if you caught this, but as we sang the hymn, there, each stanza began with an interesting word. It actually outlines the themes of Advent. The first stanza begins with once, meaning past. Second stanza, now, present tense. Three, soon, future tense. And of course, four, come, in all these ways, both past, present, and future. And so it is, again, fitting that we consider how our Lord comes to us 
and specifically how he came in blessing. He came as the lamb, as John said, all our sins redressing, meaning making full atonement for our sins. He came in likeness lowly, came in the humility of of our own human flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, as Son of God and Son of Man most holy. And of course, the redressing for our sins was made when he bore the cross to save us, to save us from our sins, to save us from the wages of our sin, that is death, to save us from the penalty of all those who remain in their sins, which is hell. To save us, to redeem us, to redress for our sins. And because he has done these things, then, of course, the consequence is hope. Hope in the resurrection and life everlasting, as we heard in the funeral today. And freedom. Freedom to serve God without fear all the days of our lives. Freedom to live not under the heavy weight of the law, but in the freedom of forgiveness of sins, to live in faith and love for God and for one another. Once he came in blessing. Of course, we would only know this if he had told us. So again, it's appropriate that we hear God's word, and that's why it's good to begin Advent with St. Andrew's Day. We must always remember that the work, purpose, and goal of Jesus proclaimed by his word and breathed out by his Holy Spirit and uttered by his prophets and evangelists and apostles once in past and then preached by his angels now is this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. May God grant it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.